Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. Welcome to our Data Collection Plans and Building Your Evidence Continuum Workshop. This is Eliana Duran, and alongside me, I have our National Service Officer, Tracy Rollins-Johnson, and my colleague, Jesse Chavez, our Grants Management Specialist. This webinar is being recorded and uploaded to ServDC's YouTube channel. If you have any questions at any point during this presentation, Please feel free to submit all your questions to our National Service email address at americorps.dc.gov. This presentation will focus on what is data, steps in a data collection plan, select data to collect, identify data types and sources, select or develop instruments, identify data collectors, set a schedule for data collection, set up systems for data storage, train data collectors, pilot testing data collection, implement data collection, analyze data collected, use data to improve your program, data quality, key points, the evidence continuum, and resources. What is data? Data is the raw material, numbers, pieces of information used to measure your performance. Collecting these various pieces of information should be part of a detailed plan rather than something the organization does on the fly. Establishing plans and processes is key, as data collection involves a number of steps that are going to take place at various points throughout the grant life cycle, selecting the data you want, creating and administering instruments, analysis, who is responsible for initiating or completing action items, and etc. Therefore, it is essential that these steps and how they will be accomplished are planned in advance. Here are the steps of creating a data collection plan that we will be exploring today. One, select data to collect. Two, identify data types and sources. Three, select or develop instruments. Four, identify data collectors. Five, Set a schedule for data collection. Six, set up systems for data storage. Seven, train data collectors. Eight, pilot test data collection. Nine, implement data collection. 10, analyze collected data. 11, use data to improve your program. The first step is selecting the data you want to collect. It is essential that the data you select be logically linked to program activities and desired outputs or outcomes. How do you determine what data you need to collect? The first place to start would be to take a look at your logic model. A logic model is a visual representation of the applicant's theory of change, as it will identify a good portion of the data you need to collect, including data about outputs and outcomes. Programs should not select generic variables when choosing data to collect. You want to make sure the data you're collecting are those pieces of information that tell the story of the program's impact. Another key step is to make sure that the outcome data is measurable within the program's year. Once you have identified the data that you want to collect, the next step is to identify the sources of that information. Data sources would include those individuals, organizations, agencies, schools, local or state government, etc., that are able to answer your measurement questions. A great way to do this is to create a list of as many data sources as possible. As you go through this list, think about the pros and cons of each source, taking into account the quality and objectivity of the source, as well as the type of change you are looking to measure. For example, students could be a source of information regarding their knowledge increases, but so could a school, which is going to provide you with a greater quality and objectivity. Please note, some national performance measures have a required data source if you opt into CNCS's national performance measures. Whether you select an existing tool or develop your own, here are some key considerations for reviewing and designing a tool. Make sure the tool is suitable for type of change to be assessed. 
Meaning, if your program wants to measure change in a physical activity among program beneficiaries, a program satisfaction survey is not appropriate. This also includes making sure that the set of questions covers relevant aspects of your outcomes. For example, if your mentoring program seeks to change how students feel about schools, doing homework, and interacting with teachers, then the instrument should include questions addressing each. From CNCS's perspective, pre-post measurement is preferable. Instruments should use simple and clear language that does not bias the response. For example, the leading question, has the mentoring program improved how you feel about going to school, introduces a subtle positive bias by framing the issue in terms of improvement. Instruments are not always a one size fits all. Make sure they appropriate for age, education, and language of the respondents. This includes not using insider terminology or acronyms. Instruments should produce data that can be easily compiled and aggregated for reporting. Identify data collectors. Some potential data collectors are clients or beneficiaries, AmeriCorps members, program staff, host site staff, and other key stakeholders. Other roles may address data collection, aggregation, review or verification, analysis, and reporting. Keep in mind some considerations may include time, access, objectivity, level of knowledge or training required, and confidentiality. In setting a schedule for data collection, identify who will collect the data, using which instrument, and when it will take place. Share with the team to keep everyone informed. Include any key stakeholders in the planning. Also include dates for both pre and post assessments and schedule time for collecting, analyzing, and reporting on the data. Don't forget to set up systems for data storage. Ensure that all data has security and confidentiality. Allow for data aggregation and analysis. Set up any appropriate permissions for data collectors and retain source documentation for all data. Now, I'll be turning it over to our National Service Chief Officer, Tracy Rollins Johnson. Thanks, Eliana. Train data collectors. Doing data collection isn't always easy. To minimize problems in this process, staff, volunteers, members, partners, whomever will have a data collection role need to be properly trained. The trainer should be sufficiently formalized and should be supported by written instructions and procedures. The training and written guidance should be thorough and readily available to someone to step into the role. Effective training may include hands-on use of collection tools, data storage systems, and source documentation. Further training should cover the why in addition to the what and how. If collectors fully understand the role data and data collection plays in the organization, they may be more motivated to collect good data. Finally, collectors may need to understand storage and security procedures. Source documentation needs to be maintained and data collection systems should be secured through password protection. Protecting personally identifiable information must be a priority. Pilot test data collection. A key element in any plan is to test instruments and methods. When pilot testing instruments in your data collection plan, ensure that the test is conducted before the start of the program year and that the test is conducted on a group similar to program participants. You should discuss the instruments with both the respondents and the data collectors in order to gather good feedback. Make sure to analyze the data from the pilot test to ensure that it gives you the right information. Please keep in mind, no plan is perfect. Once you have gathered the appropriate feedback from your pilot test, feel free to enact changes that both improve the instruments 
and the process as a whole. Implement data collection. Perform periodic quality control checks. As you implement your collection method, perform periodic quality control checks on a quarterly or monthly basis. As it's best not to change the data collection plan in the middle of a program year, no elements that should be revised and approve them in the following year. Analyze collected data. As you analyze your data, collect it against the five data quality elements, validity, completeness, consistency, accuracy, and verifiability. Compare to both current year targets and previous year targets. Data that is not known is not used. So after you analyze the data, compile and share your findings for decision makers and key stakeholders. Use data to improve your program. Below is a cycle describing how should data be used to improve programs. The main elements are gather data, analyze the data, synthesize and product a report or presentation, develop a plan for program improvement, implement that plan, monitor the performance, evaluate the outcomes, and develop and revisit the goals and objectives. This is a continuous cycle, and each grantee may begin the process at a different place in the cycle. Once the cycle has been initiated, there is no longer a starting activity because the loop should remain continuous. The discuss and gather feedback activity in the center of the cycle has arrows going back and forth through the cycle to emphasize the need to engage staff and stakeholders at the stage to ensure that they are aware and informed. Consider the data and contributing the interpretations about the data. You should be gathering, analyzing, and synthesizing data on a regular basis. The cycle reinforces the idea that routine data collection efforts are embedded in the process for improving quality. Data quality. As discussed previously, it is very important to keep in mind the elements of data quality. Listed below are the key elements, validity, the data mean what they supposed to mean. Completeness, everyone is reporting a full set of data. Consistency, everyone is using the same data collection methods. Accuracy, the math is done right. Verifiability, there is proof that the data is correct. Key points and review, there are enormous benefits to collecting high quality data. It provides a sound base for decision making, improves service delivery, increases accountability, and provides for a more powerful, impactful story. Your theory of change is going to serve as your roadmap throughout this process. And the data you need to collect will inform decisions about data sources, methods, and instruments. As we wrap up this section, let's look at some more key points. Some important steps in setting up and implementing a data collection plan include identifying and training the key players, creating a data collection schedule that works for your program, and finding or creating an effective secure data storage system. And show that those involved in a data collection plan understand the purpose of their work. Keep everyone on the same page. Though they aren't necessarily part of the data collection plan, data users should be familiar with your data collection procedures. They will then understand what the data are, what they mean, and how they can be used. They will also understand its limitations. Finally, it may be more work up front. Investing in a high quality data storage system will pay off for your program in both the near and long term. This investment should be money, staff time, and expertise, or both. 
It isn't just a statement about financial investment. And now you will be hearing from my colleague, Jesse Chavez, our grants management specialist. Thank you so much, Tracy. In this section, we're going to discuss the evidence continuum. The evidence continuum demonstrates how the infusion of progressively rigorous evaluation and measurements into a phase of a program's life cycle builds a cumulative evidence base for a program. Your evidence base which is the body of evidence about your program, places it at a point along this continuum. Knowing where your program is on this continuum helps you decide what evaluation activities you should do now and what you should plan for in the future. Evidence is the body of available facts that allow you to determine whether a proposition is true. Evidence about your program works is crucial to improving it and to demonstrating its effectiveness. Evidence runs along a continuum from promising to proven. Ideally, your program will progress from identifying and implementing a program design that is informed by evidence to showing the program can meet targeted outputs and outcomes to providing evidence that it causes those outcomes. The first question you should ask is, what is my program? What is it supposed to do? And what outcomes do I want? When choosing program activities and services, make sure that they are related to these outcomes and that they are based on sound theory or evidence from other programs. Don't forget, it's important to clearly define your program so that it can be tested. For further resources concerning data collection plans and building your evidence continuum, please access the links below. Sign up for the AmeriCorps CNCS email list to stay informed, AmeriCorps State and National Knowledge Network, evaluation core curriculum, as well as the performance measurement core curriculum. If you should have any questions, please submit them to americorps at dc.gov. Thank you for watching this video. We wish you all the best. If you should have any inquiries or concerns, please reach out to any one of us at the National Service Team for Serve DC.